Socialization is a hot topic in the dog world. Now recently, it's been getting a lot more attention from trainers and vets as well. More people are understanding the importance of socialization from a young age for our puppies. But I want to dig into this just a little bit deeper because many people simply assume that socialization means taking your dog to the dog park or even a group class. In this video, I'm going to give you a lot more info about what socialization is and what it isn't. And I'm going to tell you why I don't think socialization should involve a dog park at all. At least not for most dogs. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Before we begin, if you want to get notified the next time a new video goes live, be sure to hit that subscribe button. What is socialization? Now, I think we should really take a step back and look at this from a bigger scope that includes exposure. I like the word exposure better because it implies that the dog is learning about new things, not just new people or other dogs. Exposing your puppy to new things when he's young helps him become confident and secure and able to handle new experiences for his whole life. If you envision taking a little vacation with your dog and walking down a lovely little beach or a pedestrian street or exploring a new area and having your dog walking nicely by your side with good manners and calm demeanor, well, with the right training, this is definitely possible. But exposure to new things at a young age is going to play a big part in this. Socialization and exposure means giving your dog access to new experiences, which include sights and sounds, smells, textures, and activities. It doesn't mean meeting everyone. Remember that your dog's strongest sense is their nose. So take them to new places where they might smell new things, even if you are simply starting in the parking lot while sitting in the car. It is a big deal and it is super beneficial. Who knew that drive throughs at a restaurant were so great for dog exposure? I did and now you do too. It's great to teach our dogs that they don't have to interact with everything and everyone that they see. Can you imagine strolling down the pedestrian street and your dog has to go up and greet and be engaged with every living thing? Yeah, that's not going to be very relaxing for you or your dog. Teach your dog that it's okay to be exposed to these things, but that he or she doesn't have to go any further. That is going to be a much better experience for both of you in the long run. Why is exposure important and when? Well, if you want to create a lasting positive impression, then exposing your dog during the critical imprint period is important. Your dog is most impressionable when they are the youngest. The first imprint period starts at about eight weeks and goes till about 12 to 16 weeks. This means we have a very short window of time to slowly, yet positively, expose our dogs to all the things we want them to feel comfortable with later in life. How do you do exposure and socialization right? Well, exposure and socialization can't be done quickly, as our human brains might think. You might think that you are ready to strap on a leash and head out to the nearest pet store, take your dog in and expose him to all the things, the sights and smells and sounds. While this is a good idea at some point in the future, it should not be done in one session at the beginning. I want you to break this down into multiple sessions, maybe over a few days or probably even over a few weeks. Keep in mind, we actually don't recommend taking a pup into the pet store until you've had quite a bit of training under your belt. I mean, think of it like this, the ultimate obstacle course in there. All the smells and the dogs and the people and the treats and the temptations. It's going to seem like it's Disneyland on steroids in there to your dog, who likely doesn't have enough focus on you when distractions are greatest, or enough manners to stay by your side instead of bolt off to say hi to everyone else. You'll start by picking one low key location with simply exposing your dog to the new smells in the area from the parking lot for just a few minutes. You would be surprised at how challenging it is to keep up his level of intense processing of information. This is tiring for your pup, so don't be tempted to camp out there for an hour or more. That's way too much too soon. A few minutes of smelling and then you'll be on your way until the next session. After we've done a few sessions of exposing our dogs to the parking lot, then it's time to take it a little bit closer to the door. How close? 
Well, it's gonna depend on your dog. Now, you will have to have an understanding of canine body language in order to really see where it's comfortable and engaging. Now, when your puppy is relaxed and comfortable, he is open to learning new things. If he's stressed, tired, or overstimulated, it's too much information. I usually say that the vault doors have closed and there is no learning taking place. By the way, lunging and barking and frantically pulling to go say hi would mean he tipped over threshold and you likely stayed too long in that location or got too close to the very distracting thing or other dogs or people. Now, the next step after parking lot smells and getting a little closer is taking it even closer. We might just be at the doors of the store or maybe just inside or maybe we are several feet away from the door still watching people go in and out and we may have to hang out here for several sessions again this will depend on your dog and how comfortable he is or she is with the process so far every dog is different and we have to train the dog that we have in front of us. Now, this process might be achingly slow for you, but think about your pup and put his or her needs and preferences ahead of your own. Now, the next step could be that we go inside. Maybe we head all the way to the back of the store where it's not so busy. Or if you're at a home improvement store, maybe you go to the garden center where it's a little less distracting and outside. From here, you can progress to walking around a little bit more in the busier spots of the store or maybe greeting people from time to time. Remember, this is only after you've practiced all the other steps several times, and in each time your dog was chill and relaxed. If at any time your pup tips over threshold, it's time to go back a step in the training process. Be sure to have your treat pouch and make it clear to people that you are in training. Not everyone gets to pet your cute dog. If people know you are working hard on some training, they are often very good at respecting your wishes for engagement. Another benefit of the tree pouch, poo bags. Yes, expect some accidents, even though you might think your dog knows not to go potty inside. The bright lights, the new smells and the sounds, it's distracting and stressful, and it'll probably lead to a potty accident. Don't worry, these stores have seen it all before. Just pick it up and clean up after yourself and you'll be fine. What are common mistakes dogs owners make during a socialization and exposure training? Mistake number one, going too fast or for too long. Doing exposure training with our dogs should be done in a very short but frequent interval. Smelling all these new smells and taking in all that info, it can be exhausting. This is like a human going into a perfume store and being asked to interpret all the different perfumes, except it's 40 times stronger for your dog. It's very tiring for your pup, so less is more when it comes to dog exposure. Start with just a few minutes in a new area and build up from there. Mistake number two, engaging with everyone. <laughs> We don't want all the exposure to new things to involve interactions, which could potentially be very overwhelming and scary to a young puppy. We also don't want to teach our puppies that every single dog or human they meet should be greeted. Can you imagine how exhausting that would be if you greeted and talked to every single person you came in contact with in a day? We want to teach our pups that it's okay to see people or other dogs at a distance and just keep on going. Mistake number three, not paying attention to your dog's comfort level. Understanding canine communication during this process is going to be so important. You don't want to push her too far too fast. She doesn't have any other way to communicate to you about when she's overwhelmed or overstimulated, so be sure to watch for those signs. Now we have some great lessons on canine communication in my online course, 30 Days to Puppy Perfection. Mistake number four, only working on this when your dog is young. This is not a one and done kind of training. All throughout your dog's life, you will want to seek out new experiences. Just like humans love novelty, it's good for our dogs too. You'll want to focus on it more during the younger, formidable weeks, but even as your dog is older, keep in mind his exposure to new things and build it in if you haven't focused on it in a while. Mistake number five, starting too late. Now, if your vet tells you that your puppy is not allowed to go outside until they're fully vaccinated, I recommend looking for a new vet. Proper and positive socialization and exposure has lasting impacts on the rest of our dog's life. The consequences of under socializing your puppy far outweigh the risks of safely getting out and about before they are fully vaccinated. Mistake number six, 
thinking too narrowly about socialization and thinking it's only about dogs or other may maybe other humans. This is a common mistake, but now you know better. So be sure you don't get stuck in that mindset that puppy socialization is just about going to group class for training where you think your dog is getting the right kind of socialization. I think you get the idea from the previously talked about concepts in this video that it's not the best idea just yet. Mistake number seven, dog parks. Nope, nope, and nobody nope. Unfortunately, too many owners bring inappropriate dogs to the dog park. These dogs tend to start fights whether they mean to or not. And many people don't follow the rules about leaving food and toys and kids under 10 out of the park. The dogs then fight over these resources and kids get scratched or knocked down. Or dogs get injured and have a bad experience that has lasting effects. Many people don't know how to read canine body language and misinterpret the signals that dogs are giving off. They brush off these signals, which then puts their dog, as well as other dogs, in danger. And too many people bring sick dogs with kennel cough and contagious warts to the dog park. People also bring their high energy, revved up dog that's been in a crate all day to the park. This can lead to an altercation. Instead of going to the dog park, I would suggest you find a friend with a dog that's about the same size and temperament to have a good first playdate experience with. Now, there have been far too many cases of dogs being negatively affected for life because of an experience at the dog park. Mistake number eight. I hate to rain on everyone's parade, but I don't love doggy daycares so much either. It isn't necessarily an age issue, but more a safety issue with the daycare. Definitely, while a pup is potty training and you are getting them on a schedule, you may want to avoid them. But even once they're older and established, you really have to evaluate if the daycare you're considering is the right fit. Is it similar energy level as your dog's natural level? Will the schedule allow your pup to rest at his normal times? Will there be dogs who are much different in size and temperament as your pup? That could accidentally cause an injury and of course, you want to evaluate safety and cleanliness as well as if they use the same approach to training as you do. Now, more info on doggy daycares can be found in this great video here. And what about classes? Well, puppy socialization classes when done right can be a good option. You'll want to ask some questions ahead of time to make sure it's a good fit for your puppy. Ideally, the class size will be small, five puppies at max, and the time that they will be together should be limited to about 15 to 30 minutes with frequent rest breaks to avoid overstimulation. And the puppy should be matched in terms of temperament and size, roughness of play to ensure that they will not be accidentally injured. Definitely ask about how they manage puppies at different stages of vaccinations as well. Not all classes will be perfect, but you do want to do your research ahead of time to try to find just the right fit. Just remember, puppy socialization classes only expose your dog to other dogs. Now, as you've learned from this video, there's so much more than that. Now, before I share my last place to take your dog for exposure training, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss when another video comes out. What are some examples of things you'll be exposing your dog to? Well, how about stores? or other animals such as farm animals. From a distance, those smells are going to be amazing. Restaurants, meaning the parking lots or drive-thrus will be great. Schools, transportation centers like bus stations, train stations, or even airports. And don't forget to introduce them to new textures like astroturf or tile or carpet or grass or cement. Now one thing we love to do is set up what we call victory visits to places our dogs may frequent, especially those places that they will visit often throughout their life. These will be places like vet offices and groomers. These victory visits are just you and your pup going in there for the sole purpose of saying hi, creating a quick positive association and then leaving without anything bad or scary happening. Now, whether you start with sitting in the parking lot and eventually walking around their parking lot or popping in to allow the staff to give your pup a cookie, just be sure you set up those victory visits with your pup so they don't always make a negative association with those places. In the comments below, tell me some good areas in your community that you plan to take your pup to. 